Unfortunately, the title is true in that seven of my Crested Geckos died in less than a week, and I'm going to tell you about exactly how that happened. I will have to go back a bit. It doesn't actually start with Crested Geckos, but it does end with Crested Geckos. Lives ending. <laughs> God. Um, also, it's a little bit awkward to talk about because of the irony and that, of course, it was Crested Geckos because I tend to hate on Crested Geckos in videos, but I promise you're just gonna have to trust me. I didn't want them to die, okay? Now, for a quick rundown, I'm actually gonna go to 2018 for just a second uh, because this was right after we started Emerald Scales, the website that takes in and rehomes reptiles. Now, I was personally doing the Emerald Scales care, care of my own animals, and trying to run a YouTube channel as my full-time career. I simply didn't have time, so I decided to hire my first ever person on payroll because I had just enough money to do so at this point. Irene went well, and I worked well with this person for quite a while, and I was happy with the work that she did. She would basically come three times a week and cover all the care of my personal animals and most of the Emerald Scales animals care. She offloaded so much work from me and saved me 20 to 40 hours a week, depending on just how much of a load there was. In 2019, I actually ended up putting my girlfriend on payroll as well after she was interested in helping too because we had more animals. I also had a third person on payroll who was doing digital work, but they weren't even actually local. Uh, they just did stuff digitally for me that offloaded additional work, primarily for Emerald Scales. So there were three people on payroll, but unfortunately, things had changed with my first ever hire, as they do. I mean, things don't work out forever necessarily with employees, and the time came that I had to terminate her. Now this is kind of its own whole story in itself, but that's not the topic of this because we're actually talking about the person that I replaced her with. Because of the amount of work, I had to very quickly find a new person, but lucky for me, I felt experienced enough that I was confident in finding someone good. I did the whole process. I made some posts online, opening up uh, applications. People could submit information about themselves and resumes, and I started doing interviews. I start with a quick text interview, and then if they seem legit, a phone interview, and then my favorite couple people I do an in-person interview with. I was super confident about this person, and I actually was convinced that she was going to be the best hire yet, because everything just seemed, we talked very easily, seemed super knowledgeable, but super interested in learning as well. It all just seemed like the perfect formula for a new person, so she came aboard and started working, I think three times a week as well. Now the first few times naturally is going to not actually save me much time because I got to show her how to do everything, which is fine. And luckily because my girlfriend was also experienced with the animal care, she could help train as well so that it wasn't all on me and I still had time to do other things. But ultimately she already had a lot of knowledge and it wasn't too hard because ultimately the work isn't super complicated. You just got to keep track of what you're doing. And in fact, by the end of the first week, I was comfortable with just letting her take over and and do the work that the first person had been doing as normal and I could go back to my usual schedule to work on what I needed to do. So by the start of her second week working here, all the basic stuff was covered aside from the specialized animals that didn't need those extra bits of care and stuff that we couldn't quite trust her with yet, but that's normal because naturally you can trust a person more over time as they learn more. But overall, all of the basic care was taken care of and it was super nice. And throughout these weeks, I had been shipping animals and the day came that I needed to ship a crested gecko. So I went over to the shelf, grabbed the gecko because they were all just marked in their tubs and I could grab the one that I needed. But I noticed that there was some mold on the crested gecko and in the enclosure, just this fuzzy white mold. It was super weird. I had seen this a couple times, like in the past keeping animals, but it was very rare and I was pretty confused. So I checked on the Crested Gecko next to it and it had even more mold on it, like a serious amount of this fuzzy white mold in the tub. And I realized that it was primarily around the food dish, which had Pangea Crested Gecko mix, which is ultimately just powdered fruit that you add water to and like fruit, it can mold. This food had been clearly left in there for longer than it should have been, and the mold ended up spreading across the enclosure thanks to the humidity and even landed and latched itself onto the Crested Gecko. So I pulled down all of the Crested Geckos we had, which at the time was 13, and every single one was moldy. Some of them were just a little bit of mold, and others had just this like big strip of mold on their back or in the enclosure. Now there was one Crested Gecko that actually did not have any mold, and that's because it didn't have any food or water. In fact, this Crested Gecko was already dead. Instantly, I was like, oh God, what has happened? The first thing I did was go to check the task list because to keep things organized and simple, we just have whiteboards uh, in the room and each person will have a whiteboard of what they need to do. On the list, there was to clean all the water bowls, 
uh, deep clean the bearded dragons, deep clean the leopard geckos, deep clean the Euromastics on the bearded dragon shelf, sweep and mop, and deep clean all of the crested geckos. Each of these items were marked off, including the crested gecko cleaning. Now for a second I was like, did she just mark off everything without checking each one, but this was not the case because she actually did not mark off mopping, but she did mark off sweeping because she had swept the first floor, but not mopped it. So clearly she didn't just go through marking them all. She clearly thought about each one, but for some reason, the Crested Gecko cleaning had been marked off each day that she came and they definitely had not been touched or even checked on in probably a week. Now I've had issues with plenty of people I've worked with before, uh, which is normal. You're gonna have issues and oftentimes I can just work through those issues. And honestly, each person I worked with did lead to issues with certain animals. I mean, including myself, my first employee, me, the partner I worked with, naturally everyone makes mistakes and there certainly had been human error with animals before that were likely a cause to the death of one or two animals. But ultimately, when you're working with animals all the time, all day, every day, you're naturally going to make some mistakes. And I believe this is okay as long as you avoid them as much as possible. And every time a mistake happens, you learn from it as soon as possible and make an adjustment so it never happens again. And yeah, this has happened with myself and many other people I've worked with throughout the years. It's natural, it's normal, it sucks, but it doesn't make sense to just stop working on something or getting rid of someone the instant that they make a mistake, even if it does lead to issues with an animal or two, because ultimately teaching them and working with them and helping them improve more is a lot more efficient than trying to find a whole new person. But 13 crested geckos getting moldy <laughs> was pretty bad. So after I discovered that, uh, she was not allowed to come back and she only lasted about two and a half weeks total. Ultimately, I only gave her one paycheck and I certainly felt bad because she quit her previous job to work for me. But at the end of the day, this was not just a tiny mistake. Even though it was a singular mistake, it was big and it affected all 13 crested geckos. One was already dead and 12 more were not looking good. Now after this, unfortunately, I definitely did not have time to find someone new, so my girlfriend took over the Crested Gecko Care and treated them all for the mold, which I won't get into in this video, but you can kind of research it online. There are ways to properly and safely treat them, but at the end of the day, there is no guarantee. It's simple and it's straightforward, but when they're this moldy, who knows how much they've inhaled, who knows how much it's affected them. So treating them all for mold took a few weeks and definitely took way more hours than I had ever paid this employee for. So ultimately it canceled out all the work that she ever did to save us time because, well, we had to make up for all these other issues. After a few days of treating, one of the crested geckos died and then another one and then another one because they were just so far gone and so affected that at the end of this, six out of the 13 died from the mold issue and one had died from not being given food or water. So ultimately less than half of them survived, that being six, but thankfully they did end up being okay. There was certainly a question of long-term effects and how this would affect them into the future. So we didn't want to immediately sell them or find them new homes. So they all stayed with us for an additional, I think it was at least a month, maybe even two months to make sure that they were truly okay. And the remaining six were okay. That recovered from the mold pretty quickly. Uh, from this point forward, we did have a way bigger workload and it was very hard because we still had so much going on. And unfortunately the team of three of us working on animal care, which was kind of just two because I didn't do that much of it, shrunk by half to just one person. Now, of course, talked to the person about it. She was very unhappy with having been let go and it was in a lot of disagreement about what had happened. Uh, she ultimately kept complaining it on my communication, which I'll admit, I'm not good at communication. I'm not great at working with people. I don't, however, believe this was related to the crested geckos because it was about as clear as possible. We wrote on her whiteboard, deep clean the crested geckos. If she didn't know what that meant, she could have asked, but instead she just marked it off. So I feel communication was certainly an issue, but not an issue in regards to the death of these crested geckos, which is the ultimate reason that I was like, yeah, you're not, you're not coming back, sorry. Not sorry. And since this experience, I haven't hired anyone for husbandry. There's a combination of reasons that I haven't, but one very big reason for sure is because I have completely lost the trust in myself of finding someone because I truly felt like this was the best person I had ever interviewed, period. At this point, I had already done dozens of interviews and even now, looking back at every single interview out of the say 30 that I've done, still, that everything went the best with this one 
person. And so I definitely questioned my ability at finding the right person. Now at the end of the day, yes, this was just one mistake, but it was a big mistake. And the death of seven animals, which could have been 13 had it not been caught at this point is a little sketchy. Okay, it sketches me out a bit. It's a bit scary and I have not hired people for husbandry since. I recently did a video about uh, what I called my biggest business mistake yet, which was the realization that not only is Emerald Scales uh, unsustainable in the way that it's running, my YouTube channel is unsustainable without Emerald Scales. So if I were to drop Emerald Scales, my channel would be unsustainable and probably not go in a great direction. But at the same time, doing both at the same time is also not sustainable. And one of the most common recommendations was that I need to delegate the work. And I certainly have delegated a ton of work away from Emerald Scales. It is just so hard to delegate animal care. Even like I said, with the first employee that I ever hired, she did great for over a year, but something just happened after that one year mark, in my opinion, that things really went downhill and it was a lot rougher and just ultimately not worth what I was paying for the work. We had a lot of disagreements and we could not figure those out. Uh, but for the months prior, although sure there were mistakes and it is possible that this person was the cause of death of a couple animals, at the end of the day, that is just part of it. As I said, I've been the cause of death of a couple. Uh, the other people I've worked with have as well. And so it's just, it's such a sketchy thing and it's just so difficult. And the thing is, I don't even know. Okay, say I'm like, all right, it's time to hire someone new, but I need help with hiring this person. I don't know how to find someone to help me. I don't know how to find someone to help me find someone to help me. I just have a lot of trouble uh, connecting and finding the correct people to work with who can even at least lead me in the right direction to the right person. This is one of the reasons that I have never and probably will never accept volunteers because this person that I ended up getting rid of after two and a half weeks had quit her previous job to work for me. Meaning that it's very clear, I mean, if you're relying on me for your livelihood, you're going to be pretty motivated to do the right thing. Let alone if you are just a volunteer, you just do it for fun and you come in for free. There is so little liability on your end as a volunteer to do the right thing. Now, yes, some people do it say as, as an internship for college credits or something, but at the end of the day, an employee is going to care a lot more about keeping their position than a volunteer. And so for this person who had quit their job, who had done amazing in the interviews, who had seemed to be doing great in the first week and a half or so of work and everything was fine, to then make this big but weird mistake of having not checked on the geckos, but saying they checked on the geckos, but saying that it actually wasn't their fault because it was a communication issue, <sighs> it's rough. <laughs> so in a perfect world, I would be willing to just cough up the money to hire someone new to delegate this care to, but it is just, it's, it's a combination of me being bad at finding the right people and just not exactly knowing what to do and how to do all this because one of my thoughts was like, oh, why didn't I check on the geckos previously? Well, I could have said that for any animal she could have had an issue with, but if I'm checking on every animal, that literally defeats the entire purpose of paying someone to check on every animal. So even if I do check on each animal once a week, that's not even enough for issues like an animal not getting water, not getting misted if it needs humidity, for example, or the crested gecko's food not being taken out because that food can mold within just a few days. So delegation is not my strong suit and I wish I could just delegate the delegation where I can delegate people delegating things to other people to delegate them for me, but I am still not great at that. Now I've worked with many partners since, many ended badly, many ended less badly, but still ended. <laughs> when I delegate work for other things, let's say artists, I hire a lot of random artists, not on payroll or anything, but I basically just PayPal money for different things, for different designs, merchandise, whatever I need. If I need a design, I can pay an artist. If, they, if it turns out I pick the wrong person and they do a bad job, well, I either pay them and say, well, that sucks, I just wasted that money, or if it's really bad, I in some cases I have not paid, but the majority of the time I at least want to give them some money, even if they did a terrible job. But a bad piece of art plus a little money loss is very different than a bad job with an animal and the loss of that animal's life. So it's rough, and I know obviously lots of people hire animal care. I mean, look at zoos, pet stores, other breeders. It's clearly possible. I am just very bad at it. Not to mention, I do care a lot about my personal privacy and I don't like people coming to the home. And unfortunately, I would like to get a separate, total separate space for the animals, but 
I've talked about how hard it was to find rental homes that are okay with reptiles. It is so much harder to find office spaces. Ideally, what we could do is get Emerald Scales into its own space, hire the perfect people that do everything perfectly. Even if they make a couple mistakes, that would work out. But then there are even more layers into this whole process of trying to make Emerald Scales work, which I'm going to talk about in future videos uh, when it comes to some other issues that I've been having recently. Uh, some sneak peeks are literally running out of good homes to send animals to, which might sound crazy, but I am actually convinced that I am running out of people <laughs> that have adequate setups, but we'll see. That's its own video, so that's it. Uh, the death of seven crested geckos, which I promise I didn't want them to die. I guess if I did, I would have kept that employee, and I'm sure she could have done the same thing for me next week with the remaining crested geckos. And with that, that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.